Okay guys, you're here to get better with Thresh. Am I right? You want to get Diamond in the first two weeks of Season 13. Who does? And that means you're going to know what Hook, Lantern and Flame mean. If that's not the case, then check out our Beginner's Thresh Guide to familiarise yourself with this epic champion. But enough intro, let's jump into this guide, which is the best advanced Thresh Guide you're ever going to watch. Let's start off talking about the right runes for Thresh. Honestly, you don't have a lot of variety when it comes to this champ. If your team is in need of utility, since you've already got enough tanks, then you should just go for this build. On the other hand, if you're missing a tank, but you've got decent early game champions, then this is the best option. What's the best skill order? E, then Q, and finally W. His core build usually consists of four items. The rest are just situational. Okay, the boring part is over. Now it's time we check out some Thresh gameplay. One thing you need to know is that Thresh is a very strong early game champion and really profits from his level two. So it's time to abuse this as early as possible. If you know you're gonna be going all in with level two, then make sure to skill your E first. Bully the enemy bot lane already with level one and get those trades in. That means you're gonna have a health advantage going into your level two dive. Now it's time to count. After the first wave and exactly three melee minions, you'll finally reach level 2. Try to bait the enemy ahead of reaching level 2, because once you level up, you can just drag them close. You can use the final two stacks of your support item to reach level 2 quicker than anticipated, and once you've got it, you'll want to engage as quickly as possible. Either you'll get a kill, or at least one flash. If the enemy does flash, you'll be able to time it by writing down the first letter of the opposing champ, as well as the timestamp when they used flash. Then you should know when it's back up and how long you can continue to harass them for. Now you've successfully lived through your your first big engage, and you've even managed to get a kill or flash under your belt, but the game has just begun. So what do you have to do throughout the laning phase? Try to get your carry ahead by continuously putting pressure on the opposition. The best option here is to just ignore those minions and try to catch the enemies with your hook. Just make sure to keep an eye on cooldowns and whether the enemy has any dashes or flashes up. If they've got a dash, try to predict where they'll run off to. Honestly, you can do the same for flashes as well, with a bit of practice and game set you'll definitely get the hang of it. If that's too complicated, then just run straight at them and initiate the fight with your flay. If the opponent still doesn't have flash up, you're likely to get some good damage in here thanks to the slow ability. Follow it up with a hook, because you seriously can't miss from this distance, and your ADC will get a nice fat kill. Of course, if the opponent is a Tristana, then she can just hop out of there. But the joke's on her, because Thresh's flay is able to interrupt dashes and jumps. So once you've mastered the timing of flay, even Tristana can't escape your clutches. Okay, now let's just say you've messed up and you've got to disengage. Well, then Thresh also has a pretty good solution here. You can A, just walk back, or B, flash backwards. While you do so, throw out your lantern to your partner, letting them escape as well without a worry. Of course, this whole situation also works when going on the offensive. If your ADC is too far away for a W, then just go in hooking the enemy. You flash back, throw your lanterns towards your ADC, then reactivate the Q and get all close and personal. Your ADC will catch up, turning any 1v1 into a 1v2. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Now, if your opponent is playing Giga passive and just starting under tower, then it's time for you to go and roam. Thresh is a team player, and thanks to his roams, he can exude pressure everywhere on the map. You've just got to get some boots and you're good to go. Either counter evade with your jungler, or just head up the river to say hi to the mid laner. Oh, and don't forget the wards, they are your best friend. Now, what if the enemy is tryharding with picks like Morgana and Sivir? We all have those insufferable people to play against. Well, with our guides, you won't have a problem, or at least you should have fewer problems. I've got 99 problems, but Severe ain't one. First of all, just ban Morgana. If you forget to do that, then just try and hook the champion that Morgana won't expect. And if you end up facing Severe, then just go straight for her. Run at her and try to get into range. Try to hook her and she's going to use her spell shield. But joke's on her, that wasn't even the plan. Because right as you hook, you're going to activate your flight, which activates quicker and her spell shield will have been for nothing. Your hook is still going to land. Now that we've completed the laning phase, it's time to move on to the mid game. Or, well, the part of the game where Thresh mains run around like headless chicken. But you know what? That's exactly what you should be doing. Find picks left, right, and all over the shop with Thrash. One important tip here, though. Always keep an eye on the minimap so you can prepare for an important objective. Wards last for 120 seconds, so you've got to sweep the areas around the objectives for at least two minutes before they spawn, be it a dragon or a baron. Of course, you're going to 
to place your own wards as well in this time. Okay, now that you've got vision everywhere, it's time for you and your team to take a breather. Chill in a bush and make the opponents think you've started the drake. But as they try to face check and see, you guys are going to pounce on them. What are you going to get? free kills. Right, you've got your drake and the kills. Time to reset and do it all over again at the next key objective, so prepare those wards. If your team is pushing top, then it's time to go into the enemy jungle, so keep an eye on the minimap to know where to place the wards exactly. We can't stress enough how important these are. Picks here and there are fine, but what do you do when the enemy team starts a team fight? Your sole job will be to protect the carries and try to get a hook onto the enemies. It's best you just position yourself in front of your carry and then flay the front line of the enemies to keep them away away from your damage dealer. If you see an opening, whip out a hook to try and hit the opposing ADC. If you land it, you could change the whole course of the game. Oh, and once the enemy is hooked, your team should know what to do. Your job is done. If the enemy still try to escape, even with 20 hooks thrown out, then we've got a little extra trick up our sleeve. You can just block their path with your lantern. The lantern is an object so you can block off the path to the tower or to a wall with it. Thresh has a unique playstyle and you can make your enemy's game a living hell if you just follow a few of these steps. So now you've got that much, you can surely make it into gold this season, right? If you've got a few Thresh tricks we forgot to mention, let us know in the comments and we'll see you in Diamond 3. Until next time.